Hey, praise God. This is Brother Clinton. Once again, welcome to my office. I know I always say that, but I do mean it. And uh, welcome back again to the Word Prophet channel. This is a Christian ministry dedicated to the purpose of teaching the Word of God to the people in the churches of God so that we can go back to serving God in spirit and in truth as our Lord Jesus Christ commanded. This particular video is concerning a question that was posed to me by a sister, a young sister, who made a comment on, on one of the videos on this channel. She was having a conversation with some other women who profess to be Christians. They're actually Trinitarians, and she was trying to share with them the Word of God. And, and the, well, of course, as she was, as they were talking about the Word of God, the subject of the Trinity came up, which it usually does. And um, the, the, the sister that wrote tried to explain to the, to the women that there was no trinity, and they were very taken aback by that. And, of course, they argued against it. And she tried to explain to them from you know John chapter 1, verse 1, that the Word was God. And, and the, the Bible doesn't say the Word is the Son. The Bible says the Word was God. And they would not receive that. And then they, they came back at her with John 10, 30, which says, I and my Father are one. And there's something that I need to explain to you um, about this according to the Word of God. I'm, when I say you, I'm talking to those of you who are my brethren in Christ Jesus. Although if you're not yet in Christ Jesus, you're welcome to listen to this message. If you're a Trinitarian, you're welcome and encouraged to listen to this message. But the ones that I'm addressing this to are the brethren that are in Christ Jesus. Just like you can, you know, you can open the Bible and read the letter to the Ephesians if you want to, and I encourage you to, no matter who you are. But if you're not a saint of God, if you haven't obeyed the gospel of Jesus Christ, then you have to understand that the letter to the Ephesians is not addressed to you. You can still read it, and you can st still learn a lot from it, but it's not addressed to you unless you have believed on the Lord Jesus Christ and repented from your sins and been baptized in his name for the remission of your sins and received the gift of the Holy Ghost. And when you have obeyed the gospel of Christ, then the, the letter to the Ephesians is written to you, just like all the letters in the New Testament, Romans, Corinthians, Galatians, Ephesians, Timothy, Titus, so on and so forth. Um, so let's go to John, John chapter 10. I want to share this with you. John chapter 10, Jesus was having a conversation, our Lord Jesus Christ. And, and you know, before I go on, let me just say, this is real. Okay, the words that we're reading on this page, uh, this is my King James Bible. If you speak English, this is the Word of God. The words that I'm reading on this page, this is not a theological puzzle to be figured out by the super elite, brainy, big-headed, you know, people that are trilingual and have studied uh, foreign languages for decades and stuff. This isn't for those people. Okay, these things are revealed unto babes and kept hidden from the wise and the prudent. This is the words that were spoken by our Lord Jesus Christ. This is the word of God. Okay, and to those of us who know God and hear his voice, it's very simple. But to those who do not know God and all they know is theology, then they'll never figure it out. Because you will never know God through theology. I don't care who you are. You will never know God through theology. It's not possible. It's not going to happen. It's, it's never going to happen. You will never know God through theology. Period. End of story. It's not going to happen. The only way that you'll know God is by humbling yourself in His sight and seeking Him in His word and in prayer. That's the only way. And so Jesus was having a conversation with the Pharisees. And, and let me just uh, let me back up a little bit. Uh, we were in John 10.30. Let's just back up to uh, verse 24. And it says, Then came the Jews round about Him and said unto Him, How long dost thou make us to doubt? If thou be the Christ, tell us plainly. Now, why did they say this? Because they didn't know who he was. They knew who he was. They knew who he was the Christ. They didn't have the revelation, but they knew who he was. And the unclean spirits that were in them also knew who he was. And they asked this question not because they wanted to know the truth, but because they were tempting him. And this is why Jesus answered the way that he did. And this is why I answer people the way that I do when they present questions to me in this particular manner. And this is why you should answer people in the way that Jesus did right here when they present to you questions in this same manner. Jesus answered them, I told you, and you believed not. The works that I do in my Father's name, they bear witness of me. You see, Jesus came doing the works that his Father sent him to do. And who was doing those works? Was it the man, Christ Jesus, who was raising people from the dead? Was it the man, Christ Jesus, who commanded the wind and the waves to be still and they obeyed him? His disciples said, what manner of man is this? That he commanded even the wind and the sea and they obey him. It was God, the Father, doing those things. 
And that's why Jesus said more than once, if you don't believe me, believe the works. Why? Because the works were from God, the Father, the only one who could have possibly been doing those things. And so he said, I told you, and you believe not. This is how he answered them. The works that he did bear witness of the fact that he is the Christ. And they should have known this because they knew the scripture. In fact, they did know it, and that's why they were so angry, because he was ruining their religious system. So he says, I told you, and you believe not. The works that I do in my Father's name, they bear witness of me. But you believe not, because you are not of my sheep, as I said unto you. This is the whole point of this message. There are some that are of Jesus' sheep, and there are some that are not. He says, My sheep hear my voice, and I know them, and they follow me. And I give unto them eternal life, and they shall never perish. Neither shall any man pluck them out of my hand. My Father which gave them me is greater than all. And no man is able to pluck them out of my Father's hand. I and my Father are one. This is a very simple statement to those of us who know the Lord Jesus Christ. But to those that are disobedient and rebellious, it's completely hidden to them in broad daylight. Okay. Now let me explain something to you my little sister who wrote, and to all those of you out there who are dealing with these same things as well, who are trying to witness to Trinitarians. The reason that when you talk to a Trinitarian, you're not getting any headway with them, you're not, being, you're not able to convince them of the Word of God, is because when you say a thing, and they say that same thing, you're not talking about the same thing. Okay? When you say Jesus Christ, and they say Jesus Christ, they being Trinitarians, you're not talking about the same entity. Okay, when you say Jesus Christ, you're talking about the Son of the living God. Okay, the one who is called by his Father's name, sent into the world to save sinners, and in him dwelleth all the fullness of the Godhead bodily. That's who you're talking about if you're a Christian. Okay, but if you're witnessing to a Trinitarian and you say Jesus Christ to them, and they say, yes, Jesus Christ, you, it, it seems like you're talking about the same person because you're both saying the same name, but you're not talking about the same person. Because a to a Trinitarian, Jesus Christ is not the Son of God. He is God the Son, second person of the Trinity, which doesn't exist. Okay, So the Jesus Christ, or, or the deity that they are calling by the name Jesus Christ, isn't the Lord Jesus Christ. And for that reason, you're not able to communicate with them, because there, is, there has been no clarification of terms. Okay, let me give you a, an example. Okay. Say that you and I are having a discussion. We're having a discussion about a pen. Okay? And when I say pen, this is the image that comes into my mind. It's a pen. Okay? But when you say pen, this is the image that comes into your mind. This is a remote control. Okay? For a DVD player. You call this a pen. And I call this a pen. So when we're talking, we're both talking about a pen, and we're not understanding each other. And why are we not understanding each other? Because we're talking about two different things, and neither one of us can see that because we're both using the same word. You see? And when I say pen, I'm thinking of this, and I'm thinking that you're thinking of this too. And when you say pen, you're thinking of this, and you're thinking that I'm thinking of this too. And for that reason, we can't agree. And I'm saying, well, a pen is blue, and, and it's long, and, and it has a little point at the end. And you're like, no, a pen is black, and it has buttons on it, and you use it to you know, change your DVD player from this to that. And I'm like, what? what are you talking about? We're talking about a pen, right? And you say, yes. That's what's going on when you as a Christian are talking to a Trinitarian about the Lord Jesus Christ, you see? Because the Jesus Christ that you're talking about is not the same as the Jesus Christ that they're talking about. And so when, when they say to you, I and, the fa I and my father are one, like the women did to that young sister, they're thinking to reprove her by that. They're thinking to, to prove to her that there's a trinity of persons in the Godhead, which there isn't, because Godhead is a singular noun that means the deity. It means God the Father. God the Father is the only Godhead that there is. He is the Godhead, and he was in Christ. In him dwelleth all the fullness of the Godhead bodily. And that's what the scripture says. But, but they imagine that there's this trinity of persons and that there's these co-equal persons that are you know, all co-equal, co which is ridiculous because the verse right before that makes that impossible because Jesus said, My Father which gave them me is greater than all. 
So if Jesus said, my father, which gave them me, is greater than all, and in, in fact, in another place, he said, the father, my father is greater than I, which is obvious, um, then how is it that they are co-equal? They're not co-equal. There's no such thing as co-equal, co-eternal, co-existent. Those are all theological terms that were given to, to, to lost theologians by the devil. There is no such thing. There is no one who is co-equal with the Almighty God, the Father. There is no one who is co-equal with the Almighty God, the Father. There is no one. There is no one who is co-existent with the Almighty God, the Father. There is no one. Okay? And there is no one that is co-eternal with God, the Father. No one. Period. He is the Almighty God. He is the only true God. He knows no other God because there is no other God. He is the only true God, and that's what his son Jesus Christ testified of in John 17, 3. He said, this is eternal life, that they might know thee, the only true God, and Jesus Christ whom thou hast sent. So there is no trinity, but these people that don't believe the scripture, they believe the trinity doctrine instead, they imagine things in the scripture that aren't there. And so when they say to you, I and my Father are one, they're imagining that the word I here applies to a deity which is called God the Son, which of course doesn't exist. God the Son, the second person of the Trinity. And so they believe that this verse of the scripture proves that there are two gods that are co-equal with one another and that are one in purpose, although they're two separate entities, two distinct entities, as they, they use the word distinct. They're two distinct persons, one from another, but yet they are one. That's what the Trinity Doctrine teaches, which is absolutely ridiculous. It makes absolutely no sense, and the only person who could truly believe something like that is one who's given over to a strong delusion. But that's what they believe. So they, they think that when they quote this verse of Scripture to you, I and my Father are one, that that is proof that there are two persons of the Godhead that are unified, that are made one somehow. See, and they think that that's proving to you their Trinity doctrine, which is actually pretty crazy, because the doctrine that they're believing is ridiculous, and it makes no sense, and it's not in the Scripture anywhere. And they're just completely refusing to believe the Scripture. You see, so if someone says this to you, and they're trying to you know, use this to prove their Trinity doctrine to you, don't argue with them on that point, on those terms, because you're not going to get anywhere. You see? Because I think this is a pen, and you think this is a pen, and so we're never going to be able to agree until we agree on what a pen is. See, once we agree on what a pen is, and we can both see it, then we can continue to have the discussion. So if people are coming to you with this nonsense, that using I and the Father, I and my Father are one to try to prove to you their Trinity doctrine, you must understand that the, that the Jesus Christ that they're talking about is not the same Jesus Christ that you're talking about. And so you have to, if you have the opportunity, you have to stop them right there and say, okay, I understand what you're saying. You don't understand what I'm saying. And the reason is because we're not talking about the same thing. Can I open up the scripture and show you who Jesus Christ, the Son of God, is? And then once you and I can agree on who Jesus Christ, the Son of God, is, then we can talk about what he meant when he said this. You see, because how are you going to know what he meant when he said this if you don't even know who he is? And then if you can open the scripture and share with them who Jesus Christ, the Son of God, is, then if they will understand that, if they will, if they will come into agreement with you about who Jesus Christ is, then you can teach them. You see, and then you can talk about what he meant when he said, I and my Father are one. But until that point, there's no point trying to talk to them about I and my Father are one, because the word I, they don't know who you're talking about. You see? They're talking about a God that doesn't exist. That is supposedly co-existent and co-equal and co-eternal with God the Father. And, and it doesn't exist. And they keep thinking that that's what the word I here is referring to. And so as long as you keep trying to argue with them on, that, on their terms concerning this or any verse of the scripture, you're never going to get anywhere with them. First things first. Paul the Apostle said, For no man can lay any other foundation but that which is laid, which is Jesus Christ. And that is the foundation. If you don't know who Jesus Christ is, then you can't obey the gospel of Christ, and you can't understand the scripture. You can't understand anything that he was saying if you don't know who he is. That's the foundation. So who is the Lord Jesus Christ? He is the Son of God. 
Okay, he's not God the Son. When you take the words Son of God and twist them around to say God the Son, it doesn't mean the same thing. In fact, it means something totally different. And Satan is the author of turning things around backwards, isn't he? To cause them to mean different things. The Son of God is the Son of God. God the Son is another God, which doesn't exist. It's the supposition of the existence of another God when the Bible says that there is no such God. You see? So the Son of God is a man who is begotten in the womb of a woman, and his father was God. God the Son is a deity that belongs to the Babylonian religion that was adopted by the Roman Catholic Church and all of her Protestant daughters, or at least almost all of her Protestant daughters. Um, and it doesn't exist. There is no God the Son. See, So the people that are believing that Jesus Christ means God the Son don't know who he is. And they're not talking about the same Jesus Christ that you are, and that's why you're not able to convince them, because they're thinking about something totally different than you are when you're both saying the same name. That's the problem. That's the problem. So if you can get to the root of the problem, and if you can clarify terms, and if you can talk to the person that you're talking to about who the Lord Jesus Christ is, and if you two can come in agreement on who the Lord Jesus Christ is, then you can begin to talk about the things that he said. Until then, you're just going to be wasting your time. So may this message be a blessing to you in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Amen.